Hi friends, it's Mari Clark for a Scrapbook and Cards Today magazine and Tried, Trendy and True. Today I'm going to be combining the trend of cut files and scrapbooking with some heritage photos to create a 12 by 12 layout using the beautiful Simple Stories Simple Vintage Ancestry collection. So here you can see I've got two uh, photos, two heritage photos that I'm going to be scrapbooking. I have one of the papers from the 8 by 6 paper pad from the Simple Stories Simple Vintage Ancestry collection. And that was kind of my color inspiration for my project today. I'm going to start off by using my Tim Holtz Decal Edge trimmer with my heritage photos here. This is just kind of like a really neat way to make your photos look um, even more sort of um, real vintage, like they're actually the the real vintage photo. Of course, these are actually photos of a photo. Um, these are photographs that I took when I visited um, an aunt a couple of years ago. They're photos of my mom when she was a little girl. One of the pictures of her is of her with my aunt and the other is a photo of her with my grandmother. And so I just, you know, took a photograph with my iPhone of these photos and then of course printed them off. So here you can see the paper pad on the right there and my jean a case swatches and what I'm just doing is I'm showing you how I'm just matching up the color palette from the simple vintage ancestry collection with my ink pads so I'm just putting my swatches beside the ink pad uh, beside the paper pad and just kind of taking a look at which colors I really love there's a color of blue there's a color of kind of like a mustard and um sort of a sagey green that I decide to go with and the color palette there in Gina's inks is just beautiful there so you can see I've got four colors that I'm going to be sticking with I'm actually not going to use the ink pads but I'm going to use the re-inkers to do a little bit of kind of a watercolor effect on my project I'm just flipping through the 8x6 paper pad here just to show you the colors that are in this collection it is absolutely stunning and that floral paper there is just beautiful and you can see how those four colors Colors just match up beautifully as well. I will make sure that I in the supply list for this project that I do list the colors of inks that I have used today but I am using four colors and they are just absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to water them down. I don't end up um, using as much of that fired brick as I do of the other three colors but you'll just see here I'm just spritzing a little bit of water into my little watercolor palette here into those wells with the ink just to give them you know obviously um, to, so they'll go a lot farther right if they're watered down but also I didn't want them to be too super vibrant I just want sort of like a really nice color palette on my background so I'm going to do a little bit of mixed media here and not much just a little bit I have a piece of Vicky Booten foundations paper on my desk and you can just see that I'm going in with a flat brush. This is about a one inch flat brush or so. And I'm just going to make sure that my brush is wet. I'm going to go into that color in the well. And I'm just going to make sure that there's a decent amount of water on my paper here. The Vicky Booten Foundations paper can take a fair amount of water. Not too much. You don't want to douse it with water, but just a little bit. And you can just see I'm putting a really nice light wash of that blue ink. And now I'm just taking a little bit of Nouveau Shimmer. This is just a shimmer powder if you've got a shimmer powder in your stash it can just be whatever you have um, this is again just kind of uh, a, a really nice subtle bit that I'm going to put on here it can be as vibrant as you want it to be this shimmer um, powder but I'm just taking my fan brush and I'm just uh, going in with the water and getting that powder wet and then it'll just activate it and it'll it'll get quite shimmery on there but I am going to dab some of it up with paper towel as well because again I just want it to be really subtle on here I don't want it to be too too dark and I just want it to play the background role here on this project of course I want my photos and my story to be the most prominent and so I'm just adding just a really nice subtle background here to the rest of my project for the rest of my project so just keep continuing to tap some water on there and just making sure that that powder is um, activated that it all has a little bit of moisture on it pick up the paper just a little bit to let that run a tiny bit I don't want big drips of uh, big long drips of, of color on here just want a little bit of movement so I'm just moving it around just a tiny little bit and here you'll see I just take my paper towel and grab up that excess and I don't know if you can really see it at this point I do think I might hold it up to the camera here in a minute um, but 
here you can, I think I'm hoping <laughs> that I hold it up to the camera for you to see a little bit closer. At least I think I will when it's all dry and finished, but it is that little bit of shimmer in the background, just really nice, subtle color. And I love that color of blue. I think it's super pretty. I think aqua is actually probably my favorite color. I do really love an aqua blue. So here you can just see, I'm, I, I don't really care about the size of the splatters or where they're going specifically. I just wanted to add a little bit on here. And now that I've got those splatters on there, I'm thinking, you know what, I think I'm just going to run my brush through that and see what that's going to look like. And you know, the great thing about mixed media, if you have been a little bit um, afraid to try it is it's just a piece of paper. If you don't like how it turns out, you can start over again. And I find that if you practice a little bit and you try some, some different techniques on just some scrap pieces of paper, um, you know, you can get, there's lots of um, cardstock that you can use just for scrap to play around with or watercolor paper and practice a little bit and just try some different things and you can get some really cool looks. And remember that we're gonna pile a bunch of product on top of this, paper, pictures, a cut file and so on. So a lot of this is going to just, you know, poke out here and there uh, around the different things that we're going to add on top of this. So uh, it doesn't have to be a masterpiece. It's just something to provide a bit of a backdrop. And I really like this because you can choose your color palette, right? So I could match up my colors exactly with the palette of the Simple Vintage Ancestry collection and have my own unique background to provide the the base for the rest of my project. So you can see I'm just adding, adding splatters and more color here and there as I see fit. I wanted to make sure that you could really see that blue and so I did go ahead and um, just add a little bit more of that and I'm really loving how this is looking as I'm adding more splatters. Now this is a cut file that you can find. I believe this is a Paige Evans cut file that's in the Scrapbook and Cards Today um, website. It's on their website with their free cut files and so I cut that with my Cameo and here you can see, I'm just showing you an up close of that backdrop. I hope you could see that there. So I have cut this cut file on my silhouette. I love that Scrapbook and Cards does have free cut files for you um, in that section on the website. And uh, I will try to make sure that that is linked in the description box below. So now you can just see I'm using one of the beautiful floral papers from Simple Vintage, Vintage Ancestry. And my idea is that I'm going to use it as a border on two sides of the layout. I like that look. I think it's really pretty and uh, just something a little bit different. Now, these are all of the eight by six papers that I pulled from that paper pad to back my cut file. So what I'm going to do to back my cut file is I'm going to take one of these shapes and these shapes are all exactly the same. So I'm only going to trace it once. I'm going to trace this once on my patterned paper. I'm going to cut it out and then I'm going to use it as a template to cut nine more. There's 10 of these shapes in this cut file. I'm going to cut them out of the different eight by six papers and then I'm going to glue that shape onto the back of the cut file. So here you can see, I'm just gonna take my cutter B scissors. I'm gonna fussy cut around that penciled uh, tracing of that shape. And like I said, you only have to trace that once with this specific cut file because those shapes are all exactly the same. Pages created this so that these um, that same shape is welded together in all of those different 10 areas of that shape. And so here you can just see it's super easy to just fussy cut this out. And then you just put your glue, your, your liquid adhesive on the back of the cut file and glue it to this paper so that the patterned paper side that you want to show is facing up and then you've got a backed cut file. So super, super easy to do to back a cut file. It takes a little bit of time and some patience, but I think the uh, end result is totally worth it. It adds a spectacular piece for your project and the trend of using cut files in scrapbooking, I think is one that I will always love. I absolutely love using cut files on my projects. So here you can just see how that's going to work. And you can just glue that onto that shape and there you have 
have that backed cut file area. And if there's any that's sticking out outside of the edges of your cut file, you can just take and trim that off with your scissors. So through the magic of video editing, you can see that I have all of those different areas backed with my, with my pattern paper. Really love that. I think it's super stunning and it's just kind of fun how we're taking um, heritage photos and combining them with some sort of new and modern techniques to create this beautiful heritage layout. So here you can see that I'm going to have to trim off my white paper so that it will fit onto the little frame that I'm going to create with that pattern paper. So I'm just going to take my pencil and then mark on my paper where I want to trim it off. And then when I'm done trimming that off, I will go ahead and adhere that down to that patterned paper. So you can just see that, um, I have it sort of laying on there just kind of ready to go but I also wanted to show you that I added some sewing so I added some machine stitching just to, to the two sides where that pattern paper is going to be and I also decided that I don't want to use this whole floral piece behind because it's only going to show on that top and side area in the, the half frame so I'm going to size that floral paper down and you'll just see how I go about doing that here. But I just wanted to just take my pencil, I take that to my trimmer and trim that so that I'm only going to be using an L shape of that paper. That paper is gorgeous. I do not want to waste one little tiny bit of it. So I'm going to now take or um, glue that with my tape runner down to a piece of 12 by 12 white cardstock and now just create a base for my whole layout using that 12 by 12 paper. And uh, if you don't wanna use an extra piece of white cardstock for this, you wouldn't have to do that. You could just go ahead and glue the mixed media paper onto the, the floral um, just on the side and the top. You wouldn't need that white cardstock behind it. But um, I just liked doing that. I think I think it adds a little bit more stability to the layout. I wanted to show you there too that I've, I'm so proud of myself for saving that large chunk of that floral paper because it's gorgeous. Now I am going to take my ATG gun here. Um, this is a really, really super, super strong adhesive. And when you've got some mixed media on your paper and you have a little bit of warping with your paper, there's a couple things you can do. You can do this technique that I'm showing you here where you use your ATG gun to adhere the, the uh, mixed media piece onto this other paper. And it will actually really help your, your uh, mixed media piece smooth out. And you'll see that when I lay this down. The other thing that you could do is run your foundations paper with the mixed media on it through a laminator. I did not do that today. I kind of forgot to do that. And so then when I was finished, I'm ready. I've got my sewing on there and everything. This is the other technique you can do is using your ATG gun to smooth that out. You do kind of have to then, you're committed to having a full sheet of paper behind it. Um, but I was totally okay with doing that. So if you do have a laminator, that is one trick. If you use some mixed media and you have a little bit of warping with your paper and you want it to be nice and flat, you can uh, flatten it with your laminator. Now I've got that on there and I do want to pop my uh, beautiful cut file piece here up on some foam adhesive. So I'm taking my 3L uh, scrapbook adhesives squares. These are the larger squares that I have in my stash. I've, I love this adhesive, by the way. Um, it's my favorite foam squares. I have tons of these in my stash and I like them for not just scrapbooking, but for card making too. And I like the smaller squares as well. They're perfect for adding sentiments to scrapbooking layouts and that kind of thing. But so for this, I just wanted to show you, I popped that, I popped my, um, my cut file piece up. I'm loving that. And now I also want to mat my photos. So I'm first going to mat them in this really pretty light blue paper. And there's enough of a scrap from when I backed those cut files to mat both of my photos, which made me super happy. This one photo that I'm matting now is a four by three photo. And the other photo you can see obviously is a decent amount smaller than that. I'm not 100% sure of the dimensions, but probably about a half an inch um, both lengthwise, lengthwise and width. It might be a little bit um, less wide in dimension than it is uh, tall than as the four by three ratio just because of the um, 
the photo, I wanted to make sure that I didn't cut my aunt's hands off in the photo. And so sometimes when you're printing a photo, you just kind of have to wiggle around the uh, length and width of the photo to make sure that you can get all of the different parts of the of the photo into the frame. And so that's what that's why my photo on the right there's a little bit more narrow in ratio than the other photo is. But I was totally okay with that because they're basically the same shape. And I loved that the one is smaller than the other. I like that idea when you're putting two photos together. And I just think it looks interesting in that way. And I also wanted to map my photos with this um, mustard color paper as well. I love that. It's so pretty. And it obviously goes with the rest of the, the layout and the project. I didn't add too much of that um, orangey red that's in the Simple Vintage Ancestry Collection, but there are a few little pops of it here and there. Uh, but you can see that this pattern paper actually has a stripe of that red in it as well. So it's just a little bit of subtle little pops of that, that color as well here and there on the layout, but so pretty. Love this collection. The color palette in this collection, you guys, is just so amazing. It is one of my favorite color palettes to work with, not just in scrapbooking, but in card making as well. I think it's super pretty. And uh, yeah, so I definitely wanted to use this paper as well. I also wanted to um, give my um, project, my photos, a little pop of um, black. So what I decided to do was switch out that that um, plaid paper. And you can see that I've used that plaid paper in my um, backing my cut file. So you can see that it's still in my photo mat area, but it's not going to be a layer there. So it's still going to be around there, but not in the exact photo mat. So here you can just see that I have done the journaling on some vellum and uh, using my t my computer. So I just printed that off using Microsoft Word and my uh, just my regular printer. And here I'm sticking it into a glassine bag and I'm going to uh, staple that to the back of a four by three cut apart that that's part of the collection as well, the four by three cut apart sheet. And I am going to staple that glassine bag to the back of the four by three cut apart and then stick that hidden journaling inside. I am going to add some journaling to this card as well and indicate that there's more journaling in the pocket, but I couldn't get all of this journaling onto the project. There was, I wanted to say a lot about these photos. And so in order to do that, I just thought I will add it in that way. And I've got the gorgeous washi tape from the collection. I'm going to close up the bag with that washi and then that will just be adhered with repositionable adhesive to the project and then my other journaling is going to indicate for the person looking at this to flip that up. I use uh, hidden journaling lots on my projects and I, I've told my kids many times when you're looking through these albums in days to come make sure that you check the back of the layout and people have said to me well isn't that aren't they going to have to take the projects out of the page protectors? Yeah they are and I'm totally okay with that as long as they know to do that so I've told them that many times and I've showed them look at how I journaled on the back of this or look how I used a little pocket here so that you can lift this tag out and check out the journaling. It's a really fun way to make sure that you get that whole entire story told if you don't have space on the front of your project. So I wanted those uh, the one photo on the left to be slightly askew or on a bit of an angle and then the photo on the right is straight. And so I'm just using my T-square ruler to make sure that I have that adhered down. I do have some adhesive on the back of that now. And there you can see that journaling card, that four by three from the four by three cut apart sheet uh, is going to just go um, in a bit of a, still in that horizontal line across from the photos over to the right. And he, can you just still see, I hope, <laughs> the little bits of mixed media poking out here and there. So once again, I will reiterate, it doesn't matter if your mixed media is perfect. It's just to provide a little bit of interest in your background because the focal point here is those photos and the story that you're telling. So I'm just showing you how that, that journaling is in that little pocket behind there. I am going to, or I have put just a little tiny bit of repositionable adhesive on the back of that so that it stays put. And if over time I notice it, it comes, um, you know, un positioned or out of place or whatever, I can easily just put that right back in and that will be fine. 
So now I'm just looking at all of the really fantastic bits that are part of the different die cut packs from Simple Vintage Ancestry. And I'm going to just start to do a few little clusters and some layering on the project. And again, using my foam adhesive here and there on the project to give it a little bit of dimension and pop. And you'll just see that I'm just going to kind of mess around with trying some different things. I actually did an unboxing uh, on my regular YouTube channel of the Simple Vintage Ancestry collection. I didn't want to make it a part of this video because I knew this was going to be a longer video. And when I do an unboxing or not really an unboxing, but a haul video or when I show product, it sometimes does take a little bit longer. So you can head over to my regular YouTube channel if you want to take a look at the entire Simple Vintage Ancestry collection. It is absolutely gorgeous. I will say it again. I love this collection so much. And you wouldn't necessarily have to do just heritage photos with this collection because obviously you can see there's lots of other little bits that are part of it, like butterflies and florals and that kind of thing but to be honest I feel like I am going to dedicate this collection to my heritage photos because there's so many pieces that are just perfect for that and it's yeah it's fantastic I love this series that Simple Stories has been doing with these simple vintage collections um, I was thinking about putting these hearts down at the bottom but I don't end up leaving them there I'm going to put a different piece of chipboard down at the bottom and I just decided I wanted to save those hearts for a different project but I love them they they actually could have worked there they would have worked but because I wasn't it wasn't sort of like hearts all over the place or hearts in different areas I felt like they just seemed like a little bit out of place there as a icon or a type of shape that I wanted to include in that spot but I do really love these butterflies for this project I thought they were perfect and so I'm going to mix up the butterfly color here I didn't want to just use blue I'm going to mix or uh, shift them out so that I've got one blue butterfly and a red one and then a yellow um, I also wanted to use some of the stickers from that amazing sticker book that's part of the collection as well. And so I'm going to put a tab over on the side and I'm just looking at the layout here and it says, I think family is forever is what that one says. Yep, it says family is forever, which I think is perfect. So I'm just going to put that little um, tab over there I think that just finishes that little cluster area off over in that spot so I've got a little die cut piece um, and I've got this little sticker now and I've got I'm going to put a butterfly I actually switch out that blue butterfly to a layered yellow butterfly over in that area and just to vary the color of the butterflies on the project and now I'm just going to put a little bit of foam adhesive on that family ties die cut pieces from one of the ephemera packs there are several die cut packs as part of this collection I think there might even be three if I'm not mistaken and I love that there's so many uh, different size and shapes of different die cut pieces that you can use on your projects which is perfect and I also really wanted to use these photo corners I thought they were really super cool and really add to the vintage feel of my project and uh, you know when you look through heritage older heritage albums or um, when people are doing their heritage albums now to make them look vintage they often will use photo corners because that's something that was done all of the time in fact that's how people put their photos into their photo albums was with the photo corners that's how they they adhered the photos into the uh, scrapbooks I do not profess to be a heritage album expert. <laughs> uh, definitely not. I've never done a, you know, a heritage album that's made to look like it was an original album, but I've definitely looked at those and they're beautiful. I've, I think they're just amazing, amazing projects. So yep, just adding these different um, photo corners in here. I wanted to do one photo with the yellow fo photo corners and the other with the blue. And you actually get a full set of, I think it's four different colors of photo uh, corners on that uh, 12 by 12 sticker sheet that's part of the collection. 
And I think the collection kit that I had had the 12 by 12 sticker sheet and then the one paper of each of the 12 by 12 papers in the collection, I believe. So beautiful, beautiful. Love those stickers. The sticker sheets and the sticker books in the Simple Stories collections are always chock full of so many different little bits that you can use on your different projects. I wanted to use this chipboard piece, This Is Us, underneath the photo. I just thought that was a really nice way to uh, complement that area in a really, really simple way. Uh, I didn't want to fill absolutely every space with stuff. I like to leave some white space on my projects just to give your eye a chance to just sort of rest and focus on those focal point areas, which you can see definitely are the, the photos here and that black um, cardstock in the photo mats definitely really, really brings your eye into that center area. Now I did also create some journaling strips with my computer here. You can just see I've created a few strips. I think I've got four strips of journaling that I'm going to put onto the journaling card here. So these are just strips I typed up on my computer, printed these off on my uh, printer, and then I use my Caterpillar crop cutter to cut these into strips. The nice thing about the cutter pillar crop is, or if you have the pro to the full one, is it's got a light attached to it, which allows you to see exactly where you're cutting, which I find is absolutely perfect for cutting these strips um, into, you know, you kind of want them to be uniform width. You sort of want them to be, you know, the same, um, strip size and that's hard to do if you're just using a regular cutter so I really love my cutter pillar crop for that reason I find that it does make precision cutting much easier so I'm just using my tweezers and some liquid adhesive here to stick those down to the four by three card and the last line of that journaling there says look behind this card for more and that indicates that behind that four by three card, there's some hidden journaling. Now there's a tiny little area there at the bottom. And I thought, hmm, I want to put something there. Once again, I didn't want to introduce a bunch of hearts onto this layout. I'm still going to proceed with my butterfly theme here. So this is where I'm going to decide to go back into that sticker book. I'm going to grab one of the little red butterflies and this is where I decide to switch out the blue butterfly to the left of the left photo to a yellow butterfly so that I've got one yellow and one blue and one red just kind of keeping that three color color scheme going here and I like how that looks when it's when I've got that good to go so just gonna take that this is the one of the um layered sticker butterflies from the layer sticker sheet so you'll just see me take that over and uh, remove the blue butterfly and switch that out but go into that sticker book first there's a ton of butterflies in this sticker book if you are a fan of butterflies this is for you <laughs> because there's a lot and they're so sweet I think the really great thing too is the size of the butterflies is varied so here you can see this is a tiny little guy just fits perfectly in that area. And so I am going to not just vary the color of the butterflies, but also the size. So this one's kind of a medium size. And then the blue one um, where that camera is there is larger and then the tiny little red one on the journaling card. So that's perfect. I really like how that, that looks. So you can see that's just going to, once again, bounce your eye across the page from the left to the right and complete all of that. So now I wanted to add some other little uh, details in the um, in and around sort of like the cut file, the photo mat area. And I thought it would be nice to have some black because we do have the black in the photo mats. Uh, we have the black in that camera. And I just thought, you know what, it's gonna be nice to just add a little pop of black and some splatter. So I'm taking that fan brush again. Um, and I'm just going to make sure that there's some moisture in that and water down the black acrylic paint. This is just some black paint for my stash. You could use a mist or whatever you have in your stash that is black. So I'm just going to go ahead and tap these um, this splatter 
effect into some different areas on my project. Now, I did want to be really careful here because this can go wrong really fast. So I don't want too much water in my brush. You can even tap off on a little practice area off to the side before you go to your project. I'm just tapping ever so lightly. I want the, the, um, the drops to be fine. I don't want them to be thick um, blobs. And I wanted to cover up my photos. Obviously, I want to cover up my journaling. Anything where I don't want black, I have that covered with that, just that scrap cardstock. And here you can see that that just adds some really nice subtle black splatters, which I think just, it just fills in some of that space and just I, I feel like adds a cohesiveness and brings that black in a little bit too. So if you just add that to a few areas and here I'm going to decide to add a little bit more once I've checked to see what that, what that looks like, what I have, I'm going to tap a little bit more in some other areas here just to make sure that it all is kind of, you know, really nice and cohesive in that way. So yeah, that's what I'm doing there. And now I've decided that I also want to tap in a little bit of gold. So I have my Heidi Swap Gold Color Shine here, and I'm going to just take a small brush from my stash. I'm not as worried about where this is going because it's going to dry less obvious than that black. And, but I do have sort of like the main things covered up. So I've got my journaling covered. I'm just trying to cover the most part of the photos there. And I'm just going to tap in that gold. And I really love how that gold just adds a little pop of shine and sparkle to the project to finish it off. And that's going to be basically it for my project today. I hope you loved this. I hope you were inspired. I love the free cut files that you can find on the scrapbook and cards website i love the trend of using cut files and projects i think it's a fantastic way to embellish and add some really neat detail to your projects and i love um i love using heritage photos in my projects as well and this collection is so fantastic really really great thanks so much guys make sure you check out the description box below below to links to scrapbook and cards today magazine to the blog and to the supply list for today thanks so much for joining me and i'll see you next month for another try trendy and true bye bye